what did I make the biggest stink out of? Of all the like negative things, all the things that bothered me in yesterday's uh, for yesterday's show in in the game on Sunday, the missed tackles were the things that stuck in my crawl the absolute most. Because that could be tracked to just bad practice habits. And with the Eagles not going live, not tackling to the ground without, ta- you know, without practicing the thing that should end every play, as I said yesterday, you know, tackles, the Eagles missed by pro football focuses count. Not three, not seven, not 10. They missed 15 tackles. In this game against the Detroit Lions, 15. That's god-awful. Especially when you think about some of the big plays that were sprung from those missed tackles. The first one that jumps to mind is the DeAndre Swift run in the first quarter on that nine-play drive where James Bradbury came up and whoop, just totally ole. And then the second one is my man Devontae Maddox. Oh, Jared Goff. Oh, not so fleet of foot, Jared Goff. Not exactly Barry Sanders in that Lions uniform, juking my man out of his shorts. That was a bad one, and that later set up a touchdown. These missed tackles are just a product of not practicing tackling. And we've talked about this since you since the Eagles really moved away from Lehigh. It's like, how much is the product going to suffer when you don't have these players practicing good form tackling? This is the NFL. These are guys that are pretty quick, pretty agile, pretty elusive. And if you can't practice how to bring them down, guess what? You're going to practice. You're going to play how you practice, which is not very well. It's not very good. It's a bad action. It's terrible. I'll use the word terrible. And 15 missed tackles like I had against the Detroit Lions is pretty damn terrible. One of the other things was a little bit more uplifting. And I don't get as much out of this number that I, I don't get as much as I as I as I'd want because it measures one thing. It doesn't measure the amount of pressure that Jalen Hurts was under. But I thought this was interesting. Two and three quarter seconds. Two and three quarter seconds. Two point seven five seconds was the release time from snap to release for Jalen Hurts when he got the when he got the ball in the pocket. That was his release time. That's a pretty good release. Anything under three seconds is what you're going for. Last year, he averaged over 3.12 seconds in terms of his release time from snap to release. So Jalen Hurst's decision-making was better. I had talked about how I wanted to see him scanning the field in the first game of the season. I had talked about how I wanted to see that ball out quicker. He did both those things in this game. That's what gave me encouragement with Jalen Hurts. The problem here wasn't release time as far as I was concerned. It was the amount of pressure that he was under. I want to know how many times, what was the percentage of dropbacks? Did he get to the top of his dropback and then go, oh, damn, and then have to move off his spot immediately? Because it seemed like it was almost every single play. And then also the incompletions he had, how many of those were throwaways and how many of those were uh, he was forced out of the pocket to run? Like how many of those dropbacks was he forced to do that? Not just scrambles, but actually having to take off and run for his life as it seemed like it was the vast majority of the plays uh, in Sunday's game. But the fact that he was getting getting rid of the ball on dropbacks quicker is definitely a good sign. And uh, thanks to EJ Smith for pointing out those two numbers. The other thing that I was a little surprised, I was surprised that Jordan Davis didn't play more. I talked about N'Kobe Dean's snaps. He only played, I think, four snaps in this game against the Lions. But Jordan Davis only played 32% of the snaps. I understand he got a rotation. I understand you already have two pretty solid defensive tackles and a pretty good defensive tackle in Mil- Milton Williams, friend of the show. Fletcher Cox, Javon Hargrave were leading the team in that. Milton Williams and then Nicobe D, or excuse me, then uh, Jordan Davis. If that guy is doing as good a job as he was doing it with stuff in the run, which he was, he was leading, again, thanks to EJ Smith, leading the Eagles in uh, run stoppage percentage, which was 14% by Pro Football Focus. That's pretty damn good. I would, I'd want to see more of that. Now, in the second half, the uh, – Lions are actually airing it out or obviously airing it out more because they're playing from behind. So I understand you might not have your best run defense out there, but if he is showing that he can win those one-on-one battles, why not use that in the passing game as well? Because that's what he was doing for the majority of those 32 staff, 32% of the snaps that he played against the Lions. So why not get a little bit more of that going forward? 